works hot day. I think it works hot off. Start the day right, guys. Got to start the day right. <sighs> Don't need a nice cup of tea. So, quick, easy job today. Worktops. Really small kitchen. Your phone's literally at the end of the other one. So, we've literally got it's just a gimbal. Hop to lift down, drop down, and that. That's it. That's all we're doing. One little joint there, nice and simple. So, let's get it on. Okay. Yep, can I get a multi tool for these, mate? Right, Tricky, that should, if it's a decent electric one, just lift out. dodgy wire in here because you've only got one cooker socket so I reckon if you've wired the oven oh it's all white for you mate I've just got a load of crap down the back of my neck oh, well that's not pleasant I don't know if that's grease or just a bit of I think we've got something there oh, that's not nice Priorities, guys. Priorities. Yeah, I think it's just a bit of. Best gloves on the market, guys. Without a doubt. Don't care what anyone says. Well, we're 
Safe, my friend. Alright, that's that done. Now we get the other part of the workshop out. Alright. You good? Top side out. Now, as you can see, they had the joints going the wrong way. Well, there was no physical way of getting to the joints, so we need to look at our options. And we can pull the dishwasher out if need be to get the bolts back in. It looks like potentially only one bolt holding that work top together. Oh, that was fine. Okay, so we've cut this one to length. What we have got to do is this one is quite wide. This is six three five, which is way too wide for our needs. So we are going to rip it down along the back edge. 615 which is standard well, 616 is actually standard so we are going to rip a little bit off the back edge and I like to use frame sliding square for this get that one there mate This is an IKEA workshop that the client has supplied. chunk out for the gas pipes. Get the blower out mate and we can get blown off if you haven't already got it out. Just keep the dust down guys. <laughs> get yourself some gated grip gloves guys. Absolute best on the market in my opinion. So we've got to cut out for the boiler pipes now. So the boiler pipes are here. I'm just going to cut a little chunk out. It's already boxed in, so this should slide in under the boxing. So we're just going to run our saw. Blaze locks out. Right. 
Sorry guys, something has jammed up my blade. As you can see in there, a load of crap is inside my blade. Must be something I cut through. Uh, could, have, could of course have a lot of damage. So always take your tools, guys. Give this a clean out. Uh, what it is, I could have got stuck in it because all we cut with it the other day was like decking boards, wasn't it? So looks like something plastic's got jammed up in the blades. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. What's caused that? Whatever it is, it's stopping the plunge action from the... Yeah, exactly. Yep, look at that. Absolutely gunked up. See that? Absolutely gunked up. Don't know what it is. Plunge it, that's all sort of clean it out. Get the blower on that, really, please. Just blow it that way. Eyes. Eyes. That's better. Cool. So, always check your tools, guys. That could have been very expensive. And take the battery off, yeah, definitely. Build it. Just to show you how easy it is for stuff to get jammed up around your riving knife on these. Very, very lucky. If that had shot right back to the front edge of my worktop, I'd be in trouble. Because I'd like to go all the way to IKEA to get another bloody length. And that's a good hour drive from there, 40, 45 minutes traffic. That's just to the Milton Keynes one, that's without going into bloody Brent Cross. Which is even further. I hate getting in, I hate IKEA full stop. Customers bought the IKEA sink and uh, unfortunately the waste kit isn't compatible with the UK fittings. So we've got a, they're not. They're very lucky. I'll show you that guys, just so you know. Because the blade was down, you can see that. My pencil line, I've got to cut this section out. Very lucky, very lucky. So we're gonna try that again when my gimbal stops doing its own thing. Okay, so we've got that in. That is not a scratch, guys. That is actually part of the grain effect because this is actually, it's not a laminate as such. This is actually a real wood veneer, which I wasn't aware of. So yeah, but yeah, she's in. A nice tired up stand going on on it. But yeah, so that's in. So I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mark out the sink position because so, it's a new different sink going in and we can cut that we can mason mitre that and get our bolts ready to go in 
and then we can then work on this side and we do the same again. Uh, we're just going to grab our sink, get a feel for it somewhere in there because there's a cardboard template as well, mate. So, according to the IKEA website, it's supposed to go that way. The client doesn't want it that way, so it's going to sit in potentially like so. We need it to come forward because we've got to get tacked in at the back. I'm going to do a template, which is handy. Typical IKEA. What? I oh, know it is. Sorry, I thought it's elbow round. Right. I could see you on it. I thought it was facing the other way. Alright, so let's compare this to cut out to the seat. Cool, look at that. It doesn't give you much of an overhang. Bloody hell. Look at that. It's like literally 5mm. Can't have that. We we'll use our best judgment, I think, on that. We've got at least a 10 mil. At least 10 mil on that. But let's get, there should be some fixing clamps, Ricky, for this. Clamps in, I just want to see if these are even going to work. All right, okay, so it's like these little bits push in and they're different heights. Obviously it goes in a specific way. And you just set them to the height you want and then you just turn this little lever and it basically locks it in. It's gonna to have to be siliconed in quite well as well. That's not a problem. Now we know what we're doing. So I'm gonna say just read the instructions. <laughs> Where's the fun in just reading the instructions, eh really? Right, we've got to make sure we've got enough, plenty of space behind there for the, plenty of space for the um, uh, sink. It must be the big set square in, the big DeWalt one. And we can work out where that's going. We go like that, wasted there, that'd be perfect. We can adjust that and make that bigger. Okay guys, so I've got to do a bit of a voiceover on this section because of the radio in the background. So the customer is now happy with the position of the sink. We've drawn around the perimeter of it and squared it off the front edge. I'm just going to mark in a 10mm space inside our outline and then that will be our cutout. So as you can see now, I'm just working out, just visually eyeballing a 10mm. We may have to make some adjustments afterwards, but I'd rather go 10mm and then make it bigger if we need. So I'm just going to finish drawing this up and then once that's done we'll take it outside and get it all cut out. Let's see how square that wall is now. Now that we've got this worktop in. I've got our sink marks out. And our framing square. It's not bad, you know, Ricky. It's unusual. It's a fairly new build. They're not that old. It's old. Not that old, these houses. <clears throat> Alright, let's cut out our sink. I'll just put a new splinter guard on my track. So, make it a bit easier. Better clean cut now. Yes. 
to it, make sure she sits in there nicely. I've got no trimming to do. I'm going to clean that pencil mark off. Mason might at this end. Get the clamps in. Silicon it up, and hopefully, all in in one go. Because of the clamps it's got. an issue with these epoxy things, the, the waste, but we'll worry about that when I get the waste kit here. I've got to go get one for Start it. With it for now, yeah. yeah, she's in, she's fixed, that's all that matters for the minute. Next job, cut into the, uh, the mason joint. Okay, so we've got our jig set up. It's set to 616, coming in with our 90 degree left to right. Make sure you've got your pegs in, so you've got the right distance back, and it's well clamped down. may not look like a lot for wear and tear on that but when you put a new blade in you get a much better cut because the veneer on laminates the actual laminate destroys these blades it dulls them really quickly so that's why it's always recommended to put new blades in now i am a bit gutted because i've actually just bought the new DeWalt cordless router and uh, unfortunately it hasn't come in yet so I like doing 10 mil passes you'll see people that would do it in one pass and then to go through the top and then one big pass nah a bit dubious about it itself but each to their own as they say once this is cut out, we will seal the back, seal the cut out for the sink. Checking my depth, which I'm not going too deep, which is always the nerve wracking bit. Make sure my clamps are tight. Make sure my bits are in the right place. And uh, there we go. <laughs> Keep your, keep your guide clear, you don't need debris in there when you're doing this and you always cut in to your wood, never come that way because you'll get a breakout and you'll damage the front veneer. perfect mason mitre cut out and when I say about cutting in the right way this is what I mean guys you see the breakout on that that's because the blade is spinning that way towards it and smashing it out so when you do your cuts always come in so your blades are cutting into your material yeah, yeah. Top. This is now where our mason mitre is, and now I've got to cut out our three bolt holes. Now on these trend jigs, as I explained before, you've got B for back and base, if you like. So this is my back edge. Ricky's not blocking me. So my back edge is here, 
my front edges here. So we've got to make sure that we've got a jig around the right way. And put stays in like so. Get our clamps. Tap that one down. Using whatever's to hand. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Alright, All right, sorry about that guys. I actually ran out of film space, but we've actually now cut our bolt holes out, but I will make sure I do the video for the other piece. Basically no more than just over 20mm depth in your 40mm worktops. Don't need to go no deeper than that. 23, 24 mil, job done. This bit's now ready to go. All we've got to do now is just seal around our sink, seal around our bolt holes, and then we can put this one in situ and leave it there. Okay, so what we've done is we took the unit, we took this in, we've cut it oversized. We took it in, we laid it on top of our other worktop, and we've got that is our cut line, this one here. But you want to come back 9 mil to line up your jig. So the edge of your jig goes there, and that when you do your cut, it will follow that line for the center line. Okay, so, believe it or not, went in first time, absolutely perfect, didn't it, Ricky? It did. Absolute spot on, so, we've now just got to cut our bolt holes out, we're going to get the old worktop, which we've still got, and we're going to use it as a template to cut out our hob. So we're going to cut the hob first, we're going to flip it over, cut out our bolt holes, and we're pretty much ready to go. They're basically done. So we're getting there. Okay, so we bought the other worktop out and we've just, it was really badly cut out. So I've just gone with the gist of it, marked out the perimeter. So I'll now square that up using some proper tools and we get that cut out. Oh. This gimbal doesn't like being on this tripod. Right, so we've now tidied up our lines. We can now plunge these out nice and neatly. Oh, hang on, Rick, you tell me what to do, mate. You can just move this over onto this side so that the cutout is, a, is a, like so to support it. So just you grab that side, hide it this way. That's it, so there. Perfect, that way then our cutout's got something to fall on. The cutout. Cutting out for our bolt holes, making sure we get our jig the right way round. So again, with the jig, you have back, bottom, back and bottom. So this is our back, sorry, this is our back, this is our bottom. So making sure you get them around the right way, so back and bottom. Should be another peg somewhere, Ricky. Yeah, you don't want to go no more than 20 mil on this, so. Got enough lead on that. We'll have an angle, it's saying we'll have anything else. So, put our depth gauge down, wind our jig down, wind it back up 10 mil, release. And again, always pushing in. And there we go, that's the route I finished with. Face, a bit of clean off. Alright, so what we've got to do now, as you can see, we're not going to get to the bolts if they're here. We have to dismantle half the kitchen, but we can get to them from inside of this unit because it goes that way to that point which our clamp is on it but if we cut a hole down and a little hole going out we should get on all of those so we're just going to whip this one out 
I've already marked where they are. I know it's 70 mil in, we're gonna cut some holes and then we can get stuck in. All right, so worktop's off. So I've got the mark there, mark there, and the other one is actually outside the cabinet, which is annoying, very annoying. So I've got one there. And got one there. Not quite sure. Oh, it's always the fun when you're doing these. That's how you get on the bolt holes. So I know it's there. And it's there. Double check. So what we did on the last cabinet, we did this on. We actually cut a hole in this side panel to allow us to get in. But the problem with that is we've got different bolts, but we might have a random one in the in the van. So chances are in my favour. not bad going I've had these on all morning it's nearly 11 o'clock and it's only just gone the other one's got a little hole in it so more than happy with that okay okay so what we've done is we've taped and wedged this in place so we can slide it about a bit so we can put our next worktop in and down gonna lift this up and just slide the other two under Okay, so these are in. We can move these around as required now. If you're wondering why there's no biscuit joints, it's because we've got that to contend with. So you've got to get the downward angle to lock it in. It's really impossible to put biscuit joints in. I don't care what anybody says. Been doing this a long time, I know. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna apply our glue. Okay. It's gonna be the fun part, trying to get it in.
going to loosen that off, Ricky. I need you to just try and lift that so that it goes flush. It's not too bad there. You'll loosen this middle one off. How's that? No. How am I going to lift it? Well, I'm lifting this one. Has it got cut? What's your one? No, it's got to go down your one. Oh, right. Uh, Question. Um, try and put your arm in the hob hole to lift the back edge up. I still need lifting. Nothing's lifting. This is always the awkward part. Oh, I better go and get the um, my stack suction clamps. That'll work. Sometimes if you can't get to things, you've got to use lots of different measures. Don't worry about pulling these together. I'm all worried about. Clean razor blade. Now, because it's such a light colour, you know, I'm not going to lose this joint. One, the grains are going different directions. Peach of a joint. You not say it's going to show up. Doesn't matter how you do it because it's such a light colour. All I've got to do is try and get underneath and just get that last bolt done up, and then I'm happy. So what I'm going to do for that is somewhere in my tool bag. So what we're going to try is we've stuck that in place. We use my angle bit, the extension bit. Let's see if I can get it in like that first and then if not I'll put an extension on this bit. So wish me luck. tools I'll just show you what we did so as you can see we go in there like that and there you go there's the bolt up through that hole all tight 
Oh, so got our joint in. We can now wire our hob in. Hob in. Get the hob wired back in. We can now fix this worktop down where it was fixed before. I'm going to speak to the client about a cable access thing in the corner. So stay tuned. All right. So we're silicon to cut out with silicon around where the taps are going to go. And we've got to carefully drop pipe through back in and cover the silicon. Rubber seal, a washer, so washer first. So I'm a seal first, sorry. Let's get a tissue up like that's a nice silicon that's on these pipes. the bolt so the nut and that's on flexi hose through as well Dave you idiot kit now. All right, so we've got and got ourselves a waste kit. But unfortunately it comes out the same distance so we've got to take a little chunk carefully out of the uh, unit, out of the worktop. too much. Okay. Perfect. That is perfect. Alright, I'm just gonna put some silicon around the sink first. Tools. These are, in my opinion, the best you can buy. These things. When it comes to buying silicon tools, can't go wrong. Okay. 
beautiful. Okay, so waste cutter, cutter. Cut this off down here. this stuff I like it but it's really filling with money. It's not compatible, as I've said before, with UK plumbing. Okay, finished, done and dusted. Got a nice silicon clear bead all the way around. All the way around. Got a very nice joint as per it should be. This is real wood veneer, this, this is unusual. Rubbish there. Uh, so sinks in, all re-plumbed and connected, all new waste. 
We've got a hole there. They've got a like an office thing that goes over that. Then the cables will come up. That's because they've got no sockets in here. I know it's not legal, but if I don't do it, they're going to do it anyway. So what they do is up to them now. But yeah, that's it done. New worktops in done. It, we would have been finished at 12 o'clock, but I had to go out and get a new waste kit. It was an IKEA sink. The waste kit isn't compatible with the UK, so I've had to go buy a waste kit and a actual plug hole and new waste for the washing machine and everything else, single single spigot waste. But yeah, she's done, finished, off to the next job. Don't forget guys, like, share, follow, get onto that YouTube channel and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.